Hey guys, what's going on? Today we have a special video. Before we get this video started, let's just solve it. Now we can get started. It is about my engineering degree in, I don't know, how do we call this video? My engineering degree in, I don't know how many minutes it will take. Let's see, maybe 10, 15 minutes. Let's see how we are doing. But before we get started, I want to mention that this video is sponsored by Skillshare. And if you don't know what Skillshare is, it's basically a platform with over 3 million students and it enables you to learn every skill you want to learn basically. If it's about public speaking, editing software, uh, how you imp can improve yourself. I'm currently learning something about, uh, let me just check, I have the tabs open. I'm currently learning about After Effects and how you can light your videos. So as you might see, I have one lightning here and one LED is here. Maybe you see the blue light. So let me know if you li like the lightning. If not, then I have to optimize my lightning process. Anyway, you can find a link to Skillshare down in the description. If you sign up, you get two months for free. So make sure to check it out. Anyway, let's move on. So today is about the engineering degree, which I hopefully will soon finish. And uh, I will t show you what I did in my bachelor's and my master's. So let's get started with uh, the bachelor's. Here we can see that I did my thesis, which is mandatory, otherwise you won't get your degree. Then I did an internship, it's not just one, it was basically three internships with over over 20 weeks I did, so two internships were more about like welding, all those kind of things, bending metal and CNC programming. I'll show you what I built in this internship, one moment. Two thousand years later. This here, this is a Stirling engine and the other one is a cube, as you can see. Very sophisticated design, I know. If anyone wants to buy this, just drop me a message. It's only $500, only for you. <laughs> and this is the Sterling engine I built, so you can basically heat it up in the front. And then th through thermodynamical processes, this wheel here magically turns. Here we have the heatsink, and you can see my weight saving design, which I used my CNC programming skills for to, to make it look more futuresque. Here, this is what I also built. This is a uh, light that you can use for your next candlelight dinner. If you don't have a candlelight dinner, then too bad. And here you can see a con rod, also CNC programmed and a piston. Yeah, so that's what I did in my internship. Quite cool and learned something. I cannot tell about some lectures I visited. Moving on, uh, we have advanced mathematics one, two, three with a prerequisite, so you have to do some exercise sheets. If you do not pass these prerequisites, you cannot register for the exam and participate in the exam. So we had uh, advanced mathematics one, two, and three. Then we had principles of natural science, chemistry. I think that was removed now for new students at KIT. By the way, KIT stands for Karlsruhe Institute of Technology, which sounds like MIT. Um, but yeah, did they steal it? Mm, no. Then we have wave phenomena in classical physics. It's basically high school physics. You can learn three days for it and then you're good to go. Engineering mechanics. Oh man, I get PTSD thinking about engineering mechanics. It was very interesting. So big shout out to Mr. Bülke, who was our professor for engineering mechanics one and two. A very, very nice professor. Um, we basically just sucked as students. So we had a dropout rate in this exam of our failing rate of approximately 40 to 45 percent something like this so very bad and uh, engineering th mechanics 3 and 4 were also cool but I didn't visit the lectures yeah, I'm completely honest here <laughs> and also with these uh, subjects you have prerequisites that you have to do otherwise you can't register for the exam then we have material science 1 and 2 so the first two semesters and to participate in this oral exam you have to do a lab course which was kind of funny because I almost failed the first day in the lab course because I was not able to draw a Smith diagram but then this uh, guy from the lab gave me another chance and I passed it and I did quite
quite well in the ORA exam. So, so much about that. Then we have mechanical design one to four. So we have also prerequisite that you have to pass a workshop. We had a, like a cleaning machine from the streets that we had to build in semester three and four. And before that we had like um, learning CAD software, learning drawings from different perspectives. It was quite interesting, but the problem here is that your focus shifts uh, away from thermodynamics, which you also have in semester three and four, which is a very tough subject. I think the toughest in bachelor, at least in my opinion which we have next here. So technical thermodynamics exam was like the most, like the hardest one I had in my bachelor's. Dropout rate or failing rate of also like 40%. <laughs> I also know some guys who also dropped out of university because of this. <clears throat> next we have production operations management, nothing to tell about. It's a mandatory um, lecture. I don't know if we have to do it now, but I had to do it back then. Then electrical engineering, not much to tell about. Professor was more into politics than into electronics. So I basically skipped the lecture. That's the essence of my, oh, basically of my whole study. <laughs> but not in my masters. Uh, then computer science. Lecture was cool, exam was not cool, and we learned Java. Okay, I mean, we could have done C++ or maybe Python, but yeah. But I think high level language was, was quite okay. Anyway, then we move on, we have measurement and control system, very tough exam as well for everybody, uh, almost everybody, and, but very interesting topic, maybe we'll cover that in the future, let's see. Fluid mechanics, that's a topic we will definitely cover in the future, so stay tuned. Yeah, I think, no, they split it up into two parts now, so we have fluid mechanics one and two in my university, then machines and processes, nothing special. Yeah, also need a prerequisite. Then my specialization, which was dimensioning and validation of mechanical constructions, SP07, which means Schwerpunkt, so specialization field 7, <clears throat> which doesn't exist anymore, by the way, so this number 7 doesn't really exist anymore. Where I listen to advanced methods and strength of materials, very interesting as well. Design of highly stressed compo stresses components, introduction to FEM, the oral exam was horrible. Um, anyway. The lab course experimental solid mechanics, cool supervisor, and um, I think it's still existing. Then we have dynamic machine models, also cool. And then we have left compulsory elective course, which I did on internal combustion engines. Quite interesting. We'll do this in the future, by the way, because a lot of you contacted me on Instagram and want to have a, f a course on internal combustion engines. We will definitely cover that. I also thought about like doing a fundamental tuning course, what air fuel ratio is, um, some basic tuning, how you can improve the efficiency and power of an engine, which might be on my website then for monthly fee, but I'm not sure. I'm still deciding, so let me know in the comments what you think. Then key competences, uh, working techniques for mechanical engineering, where we worked in a group and designed nut cracking mechanism, which should be also aesthetically pleasing, it was quite okay. The last uh, additional examinations I took, so usually you have to do 180 credits, I did almost 200, so these are the four subjects I took. CAE workshop, where we used Abacus for FEA simulations and topology optimizations of bridge. We also simulated a uh, con rod and also uh, arm, an arm of a robot. In mechatronic software tools, uh, I used the tools MATLAB, Simulink and Maple. We had to use, uh, we had to solve differential equations and the exam was basically you have like 45 to 60 minutes and you were a bit under pressure and you have to pass two or three exercises and then you passed. Next was also a FEM workshop, uh, was more practically oriented than the oral exam I mentioned previously. Um, very interesting, was fun to do with a partner on my side, yeah. And the last one I took was Mathematical Foundation for Computational Mechanics, was from a very old professor. Was okay to have a view from a mathematical point of view on computational mechanics. Um, but I would not take it again. Move on, moving on to the masters, here you can see my modules. So five modules are missing and of course my master thesis as you might have uh, heard of in the last video. So I'm writing my master thesis on experimental machine learning for intrusion detection systems. Quite interesting, I have my first meeting this Friday. So let's see how it goes, wish me luck. <clears throat> so about my master subjects, we have 
product development methods of product development here where you talk about scrum idea generation the life cycle of a product etc quite interesting mm, yeah. then we have modeling and simulation which will definitely come in the future and i think it's an important topic as well how you model how you set up a model what modeling is what simulation is what mistakes you can make it's i think very essential for an engineer to know these kind of things if you want to see a series on that drop a comment or write me a private message what you want to see specialized practical training i did on flow measurement techniques so Martinda, piv schlieren method water channel all those kind of things with the blasius profile as you might know from fluid mechanics if not then we'll cover that in fluid mechanics course and the near future hopefully <clears throat> then compulsory elective modules I took aerothermodynamics which was super interesting so if you are interested in rockets or um, other moving objects in space uh, that's definitely a subject I would recommend then I took another optical flow measurement course uh, which was more theoretically oriented from also from an old professor then I took two courses which I just had to pass so magnetohydrodynamics and patent law straightforward then I took a key qualification course English C1 advanced <clears throat> and then my last specializations to make this video not too long as you can see uh, numerical simulation of turbulent flows uh, experimental fluid mechanics where I wear a tutor like um, for two years now and now handing it to my next student who will do the tutor job in this field and fluid mechanics of table and flows you might think that i listened only to the same courses which is not the case because you can have a look at turbulence from different perspectives more mathematical more phenomenological i covered everything i would say and a big shout out to by the way to professor ullmann who was my favorite professor in my masters who covered uh, turbulent flows and as you can see in the computational mechanics um, specialization um, I especially listened to the lecture on RANS and LAS, which stands for Reynolds Average Navier Stokes and Large Eddy Simulation, which are some kind of turbulence models. And uh, yeah, we will cover that in a future turbulence course, definitely, because it's super interesting. And uh, this professor ignited uh, some kind of spark inside of me, which, which really got me interested in this topic. So, big shout out to him. And I also had a course uh, from Professor Ullmann named Numerical Fluid Mechanics 2, where we were three students and we basically had to uh, choose a project and program it in MATLAB or wherever, C++. And you can find this project, by the way, on my GitHub, so link in the description if you are interested what I program. And the last one is Project Oriented Software Tutorial, which was basically about Lattice Boltzmann or the Lattice Boltzmann method, which is um, another kind of simulation technique for fluid flow if you want to call it like that it's more it needs more explaining of course but it's uh, roughly speaking that um, also very interesting where i had a special project I did some convergence study on uh, how the grid affects the convergence but beforehand i did a project on the common vortex street putting some objects into the flow and see how the flow behind the object behaves and created some movies out of that so very interesting so that's basically my whole engineering degree. I hope you liked the video. If you have not subscribed already, please make sure to subscribe because it shows me that you're interested in my videos and really want to see more. Also drop me a comment and what you want to see in the future and make sure to hit the notification bell to get notified when I upload new videos. And yeah, if you need anything, just contact me. I'm happy to answer you. And by the way, check out my new website uh, which I built, it's uh, still under construction, but you can find the link from that as well in the description. And by the way, big shout out to JR Ali, famous cool YouTuber who does photography and videos. I got one of the 150 shots from him, Out of Sight Project. And Out of Sight Project is basically a big project um, from, from JR. Um, JR Ali. Um, big shout out to you and thanks for your shirt. And so he created these uh, these shirts 150 limited edition basically for People who have a similar vision as him. So I'll link JR in the description I know he has way more subscribers than I have he has like 250k now And but uh, I think you really should check him out. Yeah, as mentioned out of sight project. What does it stand for? It stands for 
um, or represent uh, creative minds who carve their own path um, in the digital age and refuse to let go of their passion. I'm just reading it from the screen and try to act like I'm improvising. See you in the next video. Peace.